a while now. How, as a leader who understands rule of law, how can you, um, how can we get youth to be engaged in, in, in the act, to, to, act to, to act for rule of law? If you, I hope you understand my question. Like, how can we get youth to be um, excited about rule of law? Like, I want, I want, we know that the youth, uh, we feel marginalized, we feel left behind when it comes to governance, when it comes to public offices and, and so many other places that we feel we can actually be active in. So, um, and then rule of law is like the bedrock of every fundamental right that we have in a society. For a society to work very well, we need the rule of law to be actively uh, put in place. So um, how can we get youth to be, act to be um, excited? Let me use that word about the rule of law. How can we get youth to participate in achieving justice in our, in our country, Nigeria? And if you can also tackle the topic on um, human um, women and girls right to please just you can, if you can merge the two please do uh, the floor is yours now ma'am thank you okay thank you very much good afternoon. good afternoon yes i apologize for my absence earlier and without much ado i'll just begin so um the question you asked how to engage the youth on um, the promotion of the rule of law i'm going to be relating the okay. question to can you hear me we can hear you now Oh, good. I'm going to be relating the question to our primary reason for convening today, which is um, the World Drug Day 2020. The World Drug Day 2020 is themed better knowledge for better care. So invariably, this means that for there to be a successful combat against drug abuse and its effects on individuals and in extension our society, there's the need for great awareness. So now, engaging the youth and um, citizens means that we have identified them as stakeholders who have important roles to play and can help to create awareness on the um, dangers of drug abuse. So we can, let's, um, we can engage the youth in the rule of law by essentially helping them to understand the rule of law and how they can collaboratively strategize to promoting them. This can be through the respect of rule of law, the support of law enforcement agencies, and also them knowing about their civic responsibility and education. This way, we are empowering them to become more effective and law-abiding citizens. Now, what this means also is that they understand the law and then they're able to interpret this law for its existence, which in this case, I mean, our reason for convening, the, law that, the laws that have been set up now is to stop these continuous actions, drug abuse and codes that are inimical to the society. Because truthfully, it is when citizens understand what law is, which is essentially an instrument of social control and the purpose that it serves, that a great degree of obedience can be recorded. Definitely, we all know that when there's law, there's always accompanying sanctions um, to serve as a deterrent to other offenders. But then when someone does not understand why you are setting up that law, when they feel that probably you are even infringing on their human rights through that law, they, there's this um, tendency for that law not to be obeyed. So, but when you have engaged them, after publicizing that there is a law that prohibits um, drug abuse and um, all of that, you let them know that they have this civic responsibility as youth to not indulge in such, because not only does it have its effects on them, that is the users of this um, drug, but it also have effects on other people around them, their families for starters, and then the society in general. We've seen cases where those that um, abuse drugs become um, nuisances in the society. You see them turn to street urchins and they begin to, um, how I put it, engage in nefarious activities, like I said, which are inimical to the society. So when we engage the youth, who in turn also engage other youths, letting them know that they also have a responsibility, and that is to obey the law. 
and that is to promote the rule of law, to, to um, support the law enforcement agencies. That way they're being empowered to become more effective law abiding citizens. Now moving on to the next one, you said understanding the rights of women and girls, right Sarah? Yes, please. That's the question. Understanding the rights of women and girls. So now, again, I would like to begin like this. For you to understand the rights of women and girls, it means that you understand, okay, it means that you are, you are aware that women and girls do have rights in a society. And this is where the rule of law comes in. The rule of law primarily means that for there to be law and order, all citizens are equal before the law, irrespective of your gender, irrespective of your class. So long as you are a citizen and there's a law that is governing that particular society, all citizens are equal before the law. So when all citizens are actually equal, before the law, definitely there will be promotion of um, there will be promotion of human rights. There will be protection of um, human dignity and freedom, rights to freedom of expression, movement, rights to life, and ensuring that others also have this duty to respect these rights. So, primarily, um, we've all noticed the recent surge in um, rape incidents in the country, and gender-based violence, as we all know it. Is always has always majorly been targeted at women and girls who have been seen as um, inferior people and weak people, and so the there's this um, there's this tendency to always um, not not always like to just direct attacks to this particular gender. Now, gender-based violence, as we all know, it is is there, there are different um, there are different areas, there's the emotional, there's the physical, there's the sexual. But for this purpose, I would like to um, focus on the sexual abuse based on what has been happening, the rape incidents. Now, um, the, the, co the criminal code section 357 actually provides for the definition of what rape is and also the ingredients that constitutes rape. So, def so primarily what this means is that when someone begins to um, touch another person indiscriminately without this person's consent and there's a penetration inside and there's a penetration into the, the parts of the other sex, then rape has occurred. But now, we've also found out that those people that actually commit this act I, I wouldn't say they don't know that they have committed the offense of rape because some of them actually know that they've committed the offense of rape. So my, my question is, is it that the, um, the punishment that have been attached to rape, which is life, impris um, life imprisonment, is not um, sufficient enough to serve as a deterrence to other offenders or should there be a more um, serious capital punishment in order for this, um, law to be effectively enforced i would say if the if there should be um if there should be a a an introduction of a more serious capital punishment for these offenders care still has to be taken in order to make sure that the those that are actually innocent are not being um killed indiscriminately and then also to find out that they were actually innocent from their own start. So now to be able to combat um, rape, to be able to combat drug abuse, it is always important for there to be a form of awareness among every individual in the society. This is a collective responsibility, it's not only that of the government agencies. That is what we must understand, especially we youths. We must understand that we all have a duty to be to be aware of what is happening and to also protect and report whenever we notice such um, abuse that are going on. This way we are able to support the law enforcement agencies in um, combating this um, abuse of women and girls' rights that is happening in our society. It's, it's really sad because like I said, it's been on the upsurge recently. 
So um, we need to understand that human rights are fundamental rights that have been recognized by a state and are safeguarded and protected. And so and these human rights have been enshrined in our constitution, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended chapter four. And this human rights, it means that for these human rights to exist, they are, they are inalienable human rights, and these rights should not be derogated from, except, well, there are exceptions, because to every general rule, we all know that there are exceptions to this. But the exceptions should not be in the aspect of um, abusing a particular gender, such as rape. Those exceptions are not recognized by law, and there are punishments for such actions. Now, the relationship between human rights and the rule of law is the promotion of peace and lawfulness in the society. Because a society is not free when one man is supposedly free and others are slaves. When a particular gender is kind of higher than another gender, that is not a free society. So law essentially promotes peace and prosperity by guaranteeing this right and then enjoining corresponding duties to this right. Now, I'm going to go back to the first question with regards to drug abuse. That is um, 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 the question where you said how youths can actually be a part of that, of engaging in the rule of law. So like I said earlier on, I said when youths are actually aware of their civic responsibility and education, a great, um, a great we've, we've won a part of the battle. And so they, in turn, we go outside to educate other youths to know their rights, to know their responsibility, to be educated, and to help in promoting this rule of law. This way, the better knowledge for the better care, which this year is teamed at, is being implemented successfully. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so, so much. Um, I hope we all learned a bits or some very important things coming from all our hosts. 